Welcome to the Octavius Gould Experience, and I'm your host, Octavius Gould. Today, I'm excited to bring to you episode number 10 titled Career Search Success. Although my podcast is pertaining to leadership and entrepreneurship, I felt compelled at the beginning of a new year to provide advice on how to conduct a successful career search. The first business I ever started was actually an executive recruiting firm, so I've seen the job market fluctuate from being employer-driven to candidate-driven. And we are actually now in what many people call the great resignation period. My friends, this is an era where employees in entry-level positions to executive leadership roles are resigning to secure career environments that are more conducive to success. So if you're in a job that you dislike or you feel that you're being undercompensated, now is a great time to start your career search. And if you do so, here are some important things to remember. Number one, find your career purpose. An important aspect of any career search is figuring out exactly what you're looking for. You need to ensure that the role, industry, and environment are all a great fit. And if you're inexperienced, it will behoove you to determine what type of career you covet. On the other hand, if you're senior like me, it's imperative that you decide if a career change is worth the risk because professionals our age can't afford to make too many career mistakes. Moreover, Recruiters and HR executives will view people who move around too often as job hoppers. And this is even though they may have had legitimate reasons. However, I always say that happiness is the key to your well-being and success. So you can only work for a bad boss or a dead-end job for so long. Therefore, try to secure a career that aligns well with the factors which drive and give you a burning desire to excel. Number two, strategize. Organize your thoughts and your schedule, since this will allow you to conduct your career search more effectively and efficiently. Decide how long you'll conduct your career search and where, because you don't ever want to do it in your employer's office or on their equipment. Instead, go to the library if you don't have a personal computer or use a job portal that allows you to upload your resume, which then will enable you to post for career opportunities using your phone. Another out-of-the-box idea is to create a spreadsheet that note the jobs that you've already applied for. Imagine a great company calling you for a quick screening interview, and this is done on the spot at times, and you can't remember the company, the title, or anything about the role. That spreadsheet to help you out. Number three, spruce up your resume and your cover letter. You want to make sure that your resume and cover letter are up to date, and if you don't have an up-to-date template, you can search for free templates online. Another thing you want to do is tweak your resume for each job that you apply for. But be careful. Don't overuse those cheesy phrases like team player that you see everywhere. And more importantly, don't lie. Instead, utilize keywords that relate better to the job posting and the job requirements. You don't want to be like that football coach, George O'Leary, who resigned from Georgia Tech in 2001 to accept a high paying position at Notre Dame, but then had to resign five days later because they found out he lied on his resume. So be truthful and honest. It's one thing to be a creative writer. It's another thing to blatantly lie. Then make sure that you use spell check. <laughs> I can re remember when I started my recruiting firm, and this was over 20 years ago, I was amazed by how many people who submitted resumes to our firm with grammar, grammar errors or misspelled words. Even back then, spell check existed. So take the time, be prideful in anything that has your name on it, regardless if it's a resume or some other document and utilize spell check. But it's also a good idea to have a friend or a family member proofread your resume and cover letter as well. Many job seekers even choose to work with a professional resume writing service to better position themselves against the competition. And I always recommend doing so, especially if you're going for a VP level position. And this may shock a few of you. On average, recruiters and employers only look at resumes for six to seven seconds during the initial screening process. As a result, it's best to keep your resume to one to two pages. I know, 
I know you all had those amazing achievements at that job 20 years ago. <laughs> I can actually recall interviewing for a VP role and I continuously referenced my first real corporate job, which was at MCI Telecommunications. Shoot, I earned five promotions in five years, so why not? <laughs> Unfortunately, hiring authorities are in the what have you done lately business. So I had to do a quick pivot and talk about more recent roles. So when you look at your resume, don't be overly concerned with limiting the verbiage on jobs that are 10, 15, 20 years older or more, because employers, they want to focus on current events. Number four, tighten up your social media. Everyone's on different social media platforms. I don't care if you have one or five, go through every platform that you're on or that you've been on and do an audit of your social media profiles and make sure that everything is straight. You want to also ensure that your profile photos are actually professional and clear. The higher profile position you apply for, the more likely that hiring authorities will Google you. And many recruiters and HR professionals will take it a step further by checking out your online prof profiles. And this is professional profiles like LinkedIn or personal profiles like Facebook or IG. So you should assume that all of your social media profiles are actually fair game to future employers. So you may want to delete that TikTok if you smoking weed or knocking down too many drinks or dropping it like it's hot before you kick off your job search. And many people have actually had job offers rescinded or gotten terminated because of things that they posted online decades ago. And as my mother would always say, have some, insert the curse word, common sense. Number five, leverage all resources and avenues. You want to work with reputable, reputable recruiters since you don't have to pay them. They're actually paid by the employer. So you can actually work with a recruiter, whether it be a third-party recruiting agency or an internal recruiter of that employer and not have to pay a dime. And it's actually to your advantage because the recruiters will give you more details about the company, details about the hiring manager, the role, and potentially information on the compensation up front before you even go in for an interview. And if you post for positions on career search engines or job boards, make sure that your resume template isn't too far out of the box because the system will have difficulty scanning and importing relevant information off of that document. The formatting will actually look bad. So make sure that whatever template you utilize, make sure that it's user friendly for those applicant tracking systems. Another piece of advice I like to give people is to register on LinkedIn or career sites like Indeed to receive daily or weekly job alerts by email. Because you get so busy with your current job or things that are happening in your personal life, you may actually miss a job uh, posting that's relevant to the career opportunity that you're searching for. Also, contact your friends and former coworkers for job leads. Sometimes we're too prideful to tell people outside of our family that we're looking for a new job. You know, you got to keep your pride in check. It's all about taking advantage of all of the resources available to you. And that's even the resources that are available at your church or different associations that you're a part of. Also engage professionals at seminars or social events. Many people are willing to give you job leads or connections if they feel that you're a professional individuals with, individual with great um, character, excuse me. So make sure that you take advantage of all of the available resources, like I said to you, and network, network, network. Too often people wait until they need a job to start networking. There's nothing worse than having someone call you after 10 years and not hearing from them and they're trying to seek information on the company that you work for, or they're trying to get you to help them land an interview. So that's an entirely different podcast about developing and maintaining relationships, but it's important to network because you don't want to be pressed 
And what I mean by that is to become desperate in your job search. And then you seem to be a little desperate to the people that you're reaching out to. So even when you're in a job that you enjoy, it's always a great idea to talk to different professionals in the industry. And like I said, develop and maintain relationships because many jobs are received and earned by who you know. I always say you should be doing the A, B, N, always be networking because it's all about who you know. So be in the know. So we're at the halfway point. I would truly appreciate if you all help me by hitting like, share, and subscribe. It will definitely help my podcast, which is still pretty new. Number six, research potential employers. Again, when I started my firm, I was amazed by how many people would not take the opportunity to peruse my website to figure out who I was or what we actually did as a company. And then when they were submitting their resume, they were just submitting the resume blindly and really didn't know what job we were even posting for on behalf of our candidates or our clients, excuse me. So make sure that you conduct research as you find career listings that interest you, research the hiring company before applying. There's also a great resource called Glassdoor, which is a website where current and former employees of a company can post their reviews. It will provide you great insight into the environment, the culture, and even many times the executive leadership team. Just taking this step to conduct that research and peruse various websites and portals out there on various companies will provide you with information about the companies, their culture, their benefits, the compensation, products, services, and work environment, and even their competitors. You may find that while conducting research on company A, you learn about company B that happens to be a competitor, and that organization seems a little bit more suitable to what you're looking for as it relates to your career endeavor. All of this effort will give you valuable information that you can reference in your cover letter or even at the interview as well. And after you secure an interview, make sure that you look at the company's website, specifically look at their press releases for pertinent information that you can reference in that interview whether it was a merger that took place a quarter or two ago that you can talk about. Research the hiring authorities as well. And you can do this on LinkedIn. It's an opportunity for you to look to see if there's any common ground or things that seem to be of common interest. And my friends, money isn't everything. You must enjoy what you'll be doing and who you'll be doing it every day for. Please never forget that. Don't get too excited about the job. Don't get too excited about the company. Everyone wants to work for organizations like Coca-Cola, but at the end of the day, you work for the hiring manager at Coca-Cola and people don't leave companies. It's well known that people leave jobs because of the boss they work for. Number seven, so you secured an interview. What now? What you want to do is, identify examples of your skills and how you're, you'll articulate the value that you offer to your previous employers and how that will transfer into the new role. You can use what's called the STAR method to articulate this very well. Situation, task, action, and result. And also research common interview questions and then create a response to those questions and practice your response. A lot of companies that are hiring are sloppy. Let's, let's be real. I work with startups, small companies, and even Fortune 1000 organizations as an owner of executive recruiting firm. And it never amazed me how sloppy hiring authorities can be at any size organization. And what I mean by that is many people won't even review the resume until you actually walk in the door and they ask the same questions over and over and over again. So you can pretty much predict what questions you're going to be asked. So if that's the case, practice and be prepared so you can go into that interview and knock it out the park. 
I also recommend to people that you ask a family member or a friend to practice the interviewing process with you, especially if you haven't interviewed in years. Many people in the executive leadership roles, they've secured a lot of the jobs that they've earned by word of mouth. So they really never had to go through a very strenuous interviewing process. And if you're in that situation, make sure you practice because you'll be amazed how tripped up you can get if you haven't interviewed in years. Number eight, interview impressively. Here are the things you want to do to interview impressively. Arrive 30 minutes early, but don't walk in 30 minutes early. Stay in your car. You actually want to walk in about 10 to 15 minutes early for a few reasons. You don't want to walk in too early and put the hiring authority in a difficult position of wanting to drop what they're doing at that moment to bring you into their office so you're not sitting out in the lobby. But you also want to make sure that you give time for an application that they may hand you. Now, many organizations will do the application on the back end, which is wrong, but they still do so. But if they give you an application and you arrive one minute, one minute prior to the start of the interview, it's an awkward situation that you put yourself in. So I would say about 15 minutes is a good time frame to walk into their front door. And when you do so, greet everyone kindly, especially the receptionist. When I hired in corporate America, I would often seek feedback from my receptionist on the demeanor of a candidate. Were they friendly? Were they a little uppity? Were they standoffish? I wanted to know these things because although they would report to me, we wanted to make sure that they maintain great working relationships with other people within the organization. And if they don't treat the receptionist with respect, they're not going to treat anyone with respect. Shake hands firmly, sit up straight, maintain eye contact, and breathe to relax. These are great tips that will help you knock that interview out the park. Another thing you want to do is make sure that you listen for comprehension and not listen just to answer. And it's okay to take time to answer questions. A lot of times when I ask a person a very difficult question, I wanted to see their thought process. And I didn't mind if they took time to think through their thoughts and then to give me a sound answer in return. It said a lot about that candidate. You can also pause while you're speaking. I do it quite often on my podcast because it will allow you to think through your thoughts while eliminating filler words such as like and um. And then you want to be concise when answering the interviewer's questions. Even myself, when I was interviewing as a young professional, I had so much information in my head because I did the things that I am articulating to you all to do. So I was well prepared, sometimes over prepared. And as a result, someone would ask me a very simple question and I would be going around the bush, beating around the bush, beating around the bush. And I would take three minutes to answer something that should have only taken 20 seconds. So be concise and answering questions. And if it's a panel interview, make sure that you take the opportunity to look at different people in the room. Don't assume that the person asking the questions is actually the one who will make the final decision because everyone on that panel will be an influencer of that decision. So give each person in the room respect for being there. And when you answer a question, look at person A. Look at person B. The next time, maybe look at person C and give everyone some love, as I call it. And be prepared to ask at least three strategic questions, but make sure that they're not things that you should already know. For example, don't ask the, the hiring authority where the company is headquartered because that's something that you could have easily ascertained by looking at their website, right? And never, ever bash your previous employers. You want to be humble, but at the same time, you want to exude confidence. And if you're asked about your desired salary, give a range like the employers do. And this won't lock yourself in to a figure. And that's a situation that a lot of people, even professionals who have interviewed for decades, 
find themselves to be very uncomfortable. That question of what are you looking for as far as a salary? Here's another trick you can do. Instead of giving an exact figure, so let's say, for example, you're looking for 100,000. Instead of saying 100,000, you can say, well, I'm looking for 90 to 125,000 in salary. That provides a range. So if they make an offer, it still gives you wiggle room. Because the worst thing you can do is say 100,000 when you find out later that the position could actually pay up to 120 and then you flip it. So give a range because that's exactly what employers do. If you look at job requisitions and postings online, and if there is a salary figure, it's always a range. And most importantly, as we tell our kids when they're speaking in public, be loud and proud when communicating your worth. Because if you don't believe your value proposition, why should they? Number nine, after the interview, make sure that you follow up. And I'm going to say this again, because I've interviewed professionals for years and we would go through the interviewing process. And I'm a very friendly, outgoing person. So even if I'm hitting you with tough interview questions, you're going to know that, you know, you can engage me, you can reach out to me. And many, more often than not, folks would never follow up. What I recommend you do is immediately after the interview, send a brief thank you email highlighting the value you bring to the table based on what seemed important to him, her, or the company. And if you haven't heard back from the organization in about a week, you still want to follow up with a phone call or an email, but the key is to be professionally persistent. You don't want to nag them. And while you wait for a response, continue your career search. Continue applying for opportunities that interest you. I've seen too often where candidates thought that they were shoe in for a role and stopped their search. Later to learn that the offer wasn't satisfactory or the company had a change of heart. So make sure that you continuously post for opportunities until you actually have a written offer in your hand. Number 10, if you're not experiencing success during your career search, here are a few tricks that you can incorporate. Schedule informational interviews. Informational interviews are informal conversations with leaders in various industries or companies that you target. And the way you want to do it is you want to reach out and see if you can just get 15, 20 minutes of their time, whether it be via Zoom or over a phone call. And you want to just take the opportunity to learn more about the company. And again, conduct the appropriate research beforehand, but you don't have to be as detailed as you would prior to an interview. And you want to ascertain things such as what are some of the exciting things that the company is doing in the marketplace? Why is it that that person has stayed with that organization for 10 to 15 years? And I like to ask the question this way to kind of boost them up, to make them become a little bit more open and forthcoming. I'll say, you've had tremendous success over a 10-year period, Mary. I know many organizations or competitors have tried to lure you away from your current company. What is it about the company that you really love that's kept you loyal, that's kept you there? So you kind of boost them, but you also get some intel as it relates to the exciting things that are going on within that organization. And then you'll find that this person will end up talking to you for about 30 minutes to an hour. You then can follow up later, thanking them for their time. And it's now a champion that you have that may help you get your foot in the door. And you can search on LinkedIn for connections that you have with organizations. So for example, if you bring up an executive at that company, whether it be someone in sales, marketing, product management, or HR, you can find out easily who you're connected to that that person is also connected to. Now, you can't assume that they have a solid relationship for decades or years or what have you. It may just be a connection, but you can reach out to that person and say, hey, listen, 
I am interested in interviewing with the Coca-Cola company. And I see that we have a few mutual connections. And I just wanted to find out how well you knew these individuals to see if you could potentially help me out. Because people love to help other people. The problem is we all, at times, we get hesitant to ask for help. But most people enjoy helping other people, especially good people. Here's a tip, a tip that I used quite often and early in my career. You know, you have what's called the resume black hole. And that's that ATS system, the applicant tracking system that all companies utilize to screen resumes. So you are interested in ABC company. You no longer can just email to an email address, resume at blah, blah, blah. You have to upload your resume to their applicant tracking system. Majority of the time, that resume will fall into the black hole. And many times you could be the best candidate, one of the most qualified candidates, but because of the structure of your resume and the lack of pertinent keywords, your resume may fall into the black hole. So here's what you can do. Again, I've done this many times and it works. Research the organization on LinkedIn and find out who are some of the executives within the department that you're looking to secure an opportunity in and send your resume directly to that individual. I would send it to the CEO. <laughs> I'm just bold like that. And I actually have done that and secured two VP roles in my career by sending my resume directly to the CEO of a Fortune 1000 company. But you got to make sure that that message is tight and right. Make sure it's compelling and concise, showing the value that you can bring to the organization and why what you can offer aligns well with their business objectives. My friends, in closing, searching for a career can be extremely stressful, especially when you're in a displaced job or unemployed. So you want to make sure that you remain motivated throughout the entire process. You got to have faith and maintain a reserve of optimism. It's going to work out. But one of the most important things that you can do is to start your career search before you need the job. Network. You don't have to interview for jobs. You don't have to accept job offers, but put some fillers out there every now and then to see what's out there and then make sure that you maintain relationships with your network. So if you're a person looking for business tips, whether it be leadership, entrepreneurship, or anything that's going to help you progress in your career, I am all about helping for professionals create a roadmap to success. But I need you to do me a favor, hit like, hit subscribe, hit share, and you will be alerted to future episodes. Thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you all in the next episode or having you listen to my podcast, Carpe Diem.